In 1880, California state geologist J.D. Whitney was intrigued by an unexpected discovery made 300 feet under Table Mountain. While digging for gold, miners unearthed a variety of stone tools, such as mortar and pestles and ladles. Incredibly, the rock strata the tools were reportedly found in was dated as early as 55 million years old. Whitney made a thorough report in these finds and came to an unsettling conclusion. Man could be millions of years older than the current evolutionary model suggests. This bizarre evidence seems to have been well documented, yet the general public and many within the scientific community are unaware of these controversial finds. The question is, why haven't we heard of these discoveries before? Oh, I think we're talking about a massive cover-up. Uh, as I said, over the past 150 years, uh, these archaeologists and anthropologists have covered up as much evidence as they've dug up, literally. Basically, what you find is uh, something we call a knowledge filter. This is a fundamental feature of science. It's also a fundamental feature of human nature. People tend to filter out things that don't fit that don't make sense in terms of their paradigm or their way of thinking. So in science, you find that evidence that doesn't fit the accepted paradigm tends to be eliminated. It's not taught, it's not discussed, and people who are educated in, in scientific teachings generally don't even learn about it. Conventional theory states that modern man originated in southern Africa around 100,000 years ago. From there, he migrated north into Europe and southern Asia, continued through Asia, and crossed the Bering Strait into the New World around 30,000 years ago. He then came down through North America and finally arrived in South America around 15,000 years ago. Yet numerous artifacts have been found across North and South America that are so old they threaten to completely overturn this theory. According to geologist Virginia Steen McIntyre, she was silenced at the height of her career because of her determination to report the facts. In the summer of 1966, a collection of stone tools, including this leaf-shaped spear point, was uncovered at Hoyatlico, Mexico. To find out exactly how old the spear points were, a team of experts from the United States Geological Survey was called in to date them. When we first began to work on the Wayatlaco site, we thought we had an old site. This is back in 66, and we thought it was perhaps 20,000 years old. And at that time, that was considered a very old age for the site. We did what they call radiometric dates, which gives an actual date range. And we used two different methods to do that. One was using uranium uh, atoms, another one was using little zircon crystals. When we finally got the dates and all the different methods we used to date it, it came out to be 250,000 years old. To tell you the truth, I would have been happy with a 20,000 year old date. It would have made my career. It was very old for the time, but it wasn't so old that it was that controversial. People can take 20,000 year steps. They can't take steps that are over 200,000 years at one time. And I was rather naive. I thought, okay, we've got something big here, but I'm just going to stick with the date. We've got the information, we've got the facts. Let's get the facts out and go on from there. And I didn't realize it was going to ruin my whole career. According to Dr. McIntyre, because she stuck to the facts, all of her professional opportunities were closed off. She's not worked in her chosen field since. The site was closed and permission for further investigation was denied forever. It's not necessarily a deliberate conspiracy in the sense of some people getting together in a smoke-filled room and saying, we're going to de uh, deceive people. It's something that happens automatically within the scientific community. So when a given piece of evidence disagrees with the predominant theory, then automatically people won't talk about it, they won't report it, and that means that science fails to progress in the way that one would hope.